Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom and welcome back to today's Daf Yomi Shabbos Daf Nun. One Daf Mem Tes Amit Beis, five lines from the bottom. Says the Gemara, the Gizeit Semer, the Metalton Oisan. The Mishnah teaches us that if one chooses to use Gizeit Semer shearings of wool for Atmana to wrap with them uh, his pot, he can do so. Because they're not much of Hevel, they don't generate heat. However, you must know that they are Muktzah, ve'i metatl and Oisan, one cannot move them on Shabbos. Says the Gemara, O Marova, lo yishanu. This halacha of Muktzah regarding Gizeit Semer was only said, Ella only provided shaloi taman behem, that he hadn't used them for atmana. In that case, they're mukta. Why a gizit semer mukta? So some of farshim say because they're considered to be mukta machmas gufoi on account of the fact that they have no practical use on Shabbos. They're intended to be used uh, to to uh, be spun into into threads, be woven into material. Others learn that the Gizet Semer are considered to be Muktzah, Machmas, on account of Chisor and Kis. The owner won't use them for other purposes for concern of damaging them. So, either way, they're considered to be Muktzah, but Rabbi tells us that's only provided he hasn't used them for Atmana. Avol says the Gemara, Taman Ben, but if he used them for Atmana, Metatl and Oisan, they can move them on Shabbos, they lose their Muktzah status because using them for Atmana. It's tantamount. To, it's as though he, it's it's as though he was miyachdem. He designated them for this permissible use, and we don't regard them as muksa items any longer. Says the Gemara, is that so? Eisvei ahum rabbanon bar yoyme lerava. So this rabbanon, this this uh, person who came to to the base medrash, this was his first day bar yoyme, the first day that he attended the base medrash, and he asked the kash of rava. So apparently he wasn't a fixed feature in, in the base medrash. He was a newcomer. Nevertheless, he had the ability to ask a very strong kasha to challenge Rava to the extent that the Gemara actually retracts the statement of Rava as a result of this kasha. So what was this kasha? Take a look at our Mishnah. It says you're allowed to use Gizet Semer for Atmanah. However, and the Mishnah continues. So what is he meant to do? If he covers his pot with these Gizet Semer, how is he meant to access uh, his pot and take out the contents? Says the Mishnah, So he picks up the lid and has the, um, has the Gizet Semer slide off. So, so he, by lifting the lid and, and having the Gizet Semer slide off, he doesn't have to come into direct contact with, the, uh, with these Gizet Semer. And therefore, he can access his pot. Apparently, the Mishnah is teaching us that Gizet Semer are still Muktza. They still retain their Muktza status even after they're used for Atmana. So this is in direct contradiction to Rav's statement. Says the more you write, Eloi Itmar, Hachi Itmar. If we went to learn, uh, quote, this statement from Rav, this is really how we meant to teach it. Omar Rav, Loishonu, when are Gizet Semer considered to be Muktza? Ela Shalo Yichdan Atmana. That's only provided that he had never designated them. He was a meyachedem. As Rashi says, Yichdan la'atmana la'olam. He hadn't permanently designated these Gizet Semer for the use of atmana. Avol Yichdan la'atmana. But if he was meyachedem for atmana la'olam, permanently, then certainly they changed their status. Metalton oisam. One can move them on Shabbos. They are not regard as a muksa item going forward. But merely using them for atmana, the shimush itself, doesn't change its status. Says the more itzmer nam. We also learned ki also Robin when Robin came. Omar Rabbi Yaakov, Omar Rabbi Asi Ben Shmu Ben Shol, Omar Rabbi. So he taught us follows the name of Rabbi Loishanu. When do we regard these gizet semer as being muktzah? Elosh lo yichtan atmana. When he had not designated them permanently for the use of atmana. I will yichtan atmana. But otherwise, if he did. Set them aside for Atmana, Metalt and Oisan, they're considered to be ordinary items and not Muktzah any longer. So, the case in our Mishnah is not a contradiction to this, because our Mishnah is speaking about Gizet Semer, that were merely used for Atmana, but were not designated to be used for Atmana. He didn't permanently set them aside for Atmana, therefore, merely Shimush doesn't change its status, and they're still considered to be Muktzah. 
continues the Gemara. Ravina Oimer, I'm going to answer the Kashif and Amishnah. Certainly, Rabbah's first version was correct. If a person takes Gizit Semer and merely uses them for Atmanah, that is sufficient to, to be matter the tiltal of these Gizit Semer, because it's as though he was miyachdem, at least temporarily, for Atmanah. So what then does the Mishnah mean? That Gizit Semer is still considered to be Muktza, even those Gizit Semer that are already used for Atmanah, says Ravina. The Mishnah is speaking about a unique case. Bishal Heftek Shana was speaking about Gizet Semer, which were, which were stored for commercial use. Why well, she says they pile them up, they designate them for schera to be used for, for sale for commercial use. In that case, merely taking some of these um, Gizet Semer and diverting them for Atmana doesn't change their status because he's certainly going to restore it, he's going to bring it back. And... Uh, and bring it back to the to the heftic, to the uh, storehouse, to the pile of commercial uh, uh, commercial uh, um, goods, and therefore merely using them does not change their designation. They still they still have the status of muktzah items. Once again, Ravino Imer Bishal Heftik Shanu. These Gizet Semer now Mishal speaking about those that are lying in the heftic, these these piles, these these places of storage for commercial items. They're intended for sale, for schayra, and therefore they're still considered to be muksa, regardless of whether he used them or didn't use them for atmana. Tani namayachi. We have a Bryce in support of this as well. The Bryce says, Gizet semer shall heftek, emet alt noisam. So these Gizet semer that was set aside for commercial use, who piled up for schayra, emet alt noisam, they're considered to be muksa. Vihimeskinon balabayit leshtamishbet. However, if the Baal set them aside and designated them to be used, as we said before, it must be a yichud la'ilam, a permanent designation. In that case, it certainly changes its status, even if these are Gizet Semer of the Heftik. Metal to an one can be metal to So as Rashi and Tesis both point out, that Rav and Ravina concur. They're both on the same page. Indeed, when Rav told us, that Gizet Semer that we use for Atmana are no longer considered to be Muktzah. This is what he meant. He meant ordinary Gizet Semer, not those that are set aside in the Heftik, in the warehouse for Schoira for commercial use. He's speaking about regular Gizet Semer. And therefore, if he uses them for Atmana, that changes its status. It's considered as though he designated at least temporarily for Atmana for this permissible use on Shabbos. And it's considered to be non-muksa item. However, the Mishnah is speaking about heftik. So those Gizet Semer that were piled up for Sechayra, certainly those Gizet Semer cannot become mutter simply by using them for Atmana. Those Gizet Semer require a Yichud Lo'ilam, a permanent designation. As the Brayse tells us, the Balabayis needs to designate his skin on Balabayis Le'ishtamash Ben. In that case, this designation changes the status of even Gizet Semer of the Heftik. So in summary, what is the Allah of Gizet Semer? So if he was meyachedem lo'ilam for other uses, for instance for Atmana, then ordinary Gizet Semer, even Gizet Semer of Heftik, change their status, they are no longer considered to be Mukta items. However, if he merely used them, he was Taman Ma'am, then it depends. Ordinary Gizet Semer become Mutter, through merely hatmana, However, the Gizet Semer of, of the Sechir, of the Heftik, lying in that warehouse, they don't change their status merely by, by using them for hatmana because he's certainly going to bring it back there. They still have that, they have that, uh, they still have that Sechir identity to them. They're still regarded of items of, of commercial use. And therefore, they still re- retain their Muktza status. Continues the Gemara. Tana. Rabba Barbachana, come the Rab. Rabba Barbachana presented the following brisa in front of Rav. The brisa says as follows: Chariyoy shel dekel. These branches of, of the palm tree, the hard branches, shegodron leitzim, which which he harvested to be used for firewood. However, venimlach alein the yeshiva, he changed his mind and decided to use them to sit on them. Sorich lekasha. He needs to 
he needs to tie them, to bundle them together, and do a maisa to indicate his intention, to be megala his, his das, to reveal his plans that he intends on using them no longer for firewood, but rather, at least for the time being, he intends on using them for yeshiva, to sit on them. And this will make them muktsa no longer. This, this makes them lose their muktsa status. So initially his intention was to use them for firewood, and by doing so, they are considered to be muktsa. But if he goes ahead and ties them together, he does a maise, which is maichiach, that is intended for yeshiva. It demonstrates that the intent and purpose here is to use them for sitting on them. That affects its, its status and is no longer considered to be muktsa. So according to Tanakam, a maise, an action is required. A maise, which, which, which facilitates the use of these eitzim for the permissible use. Rabbi Shem Gamliel Oimer, ain't tzarech lekasha. It doesn't need to actually tie them together. A maise is not necessary. It, it's enough. If he intends, if he intends on using them for yeshiva, if he has a machshava, a plan, that is sufficient. Continues the Gemara. Who Tanigla? So Rabbi Bar was the one who presented this brayse. Who Amrla? And he commented on that. That halacha k'rab Shimon Gamliel. That the halacha follows Shimon Gamliel's the shita. That a ma'aseh is not required. A machshava is sufficient. Continues the Gemara. We actually have a machlek Amarayim. In this regard, it's my regard. Rav Amar Kaisher. He needs to tie them. He needs to have a ma'aseh, which indicates. His intent and purpose. Ushmur lamar choyshev, machshava planning intention is sufficient. For Rav Asi Omar, none of the above is required. Yoyshev, even merely using them, sitting on them before Shabbos. The shimush itself is matir these eitzim. It makes them lose their their uh, muktzah status. Yoyshev afal bishloy kisher, even though he didn't tie them, he didn't bundle them. Vaafal bishloy kisher, even though he didn't even have. Kavana, he didn't have intention uh, to use them tomorrow for yeshiva. He merely sat on them on Erev Shabbos. That already, uh, that already changes its status. And we consider it to be designated for yeshiva, for sitting, and it is no longer considered to be mukt. Okay, so we have a b'risa, which contains two opinions. The Hanukkah says, a mice is, is needed. Shem says, a mice is not needed. A machshava is sufficient. Then we have a machlek samaroim. Rav says we need a maisa. We need to do an act which which aids and, and assists and, and, and facilitates the shima shatter. For instance, bundling these uh, pieces of wood together, which which uh, which uh, enables it for yeshiva. Shmuel says machshava is enough. Rav Asi says even shimush is enough. So we're going to try to align the amaroim with the tanoim. So we'll go as follows. Bishleim Rav. We understand that Rav, who the Amar Katanakam, Rav who requires Maisa, he concurs with Shita Tanakam, who also requires Maisa. U Shmuel Nami, who the Amar Kev Shem Gamliel, Shmuel concurs with the Shita of Shem Gamliel, who tells us that Machshav is sufficient. El Rav Asi, who tells us that neither Maisa nor Machshav is required, even merely using it before Shabbos is sufficient to give it a status of a non muktzah item. Damar Kaman, whose shita is he following? Says the Gemara, we found the shita. Who the Amar ki hai tana, he follows the following tana, the Sanev is learned in the price. Yoitzin bepikurin ubetzipa. So pikurin are these uh, pieces of combed um, flax, betzipa are combed, pieces of combed wool, so the point of these um, these objects is to place it on one's wound to protect it from the uh, from his clothing rubbing and irritating the wound. It's not meant for a four because a four can be done on Shabbos. So these uh, pieces of, of fibers or material can be placed on the mak on Shabbos, and he can actually take it out with him, go out to a public domain to Shusaram. It's not considered to be carrying. Tosis points out it's not considered to be a muktzah item as well. Because it's considered to be a malbush. Uh, it's like an article of clothing. Once again, says the Bible, one can walk out to Shusarabim, Bepekurin, or Betzipa. When? 
provided uh, that he designated it. He prepared it for this use. Bizman Shetzavon, Beshem, and he dipped it in oil, which softens it and, and protects the maka from being irritated by the clothing. Vikorcham B'Meshicha, he wrapped it with a uh, with some sort of strap, a, a ribbon, which will enable him to to uh, attach it, to strap it onto himself, and and uh, and um, ensure that the band that this bandage doesn't fall off. So when he does these uh, acts of preparation, he turns it into a into a sort of a malbush, and uh, one can be metaltal on Shabbos. It's not muktza. One can walk out with it to Shusarabim. It's not considered to be carrying a load. It's considered to be like one of his articles of clothing. However, But if he didn't dip, dip it in oil, nor or he didn't um, he didn't wrap it with this meshicha, so he didn't do these two acts of preparation. Then he cannot carry it out with him because it doesn't have a din, doesn't have a, sta- a status of a of a garment of a malbush, and and um, as Tosis points out, it's also moksa because it's not considered to be a kli. So the Baisa tells us that in order to make this into a malbush into a kli, you need to get it full of oil, you need to get the, 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 the strap on it. However, the Baisa includes, But if he walked out with it for one moment, before Shabbos, so if you already used it before Shabbos, as Tosis points out, it doesn't necessarily mean he needs to walk out and just around with it. Who had din says Tosis Yosha ben Bebeisa, he sat in his home with it, meaning he used it for a moment before Shabbos. In that case, the Shimush itself grants it a status of a Malbush, even without those acts of preparation, of smearing with oil, putting the, the, uh, the strap on it, Mutter, lots of spam, he can use it on Shabbos. So the Bryce clearly tells us that even without a Misa, even without preparing it and facilitating it for use, merely by using it, the Shemesh itself changes its status, grants it a status, a din of a Malbush, of a Kli, and it is Muksa no longer. It says more indeed, this is the source, Tana, of the Shita Ravasi, who maintains as well that a Muksa item. Can become can lose its muksa status merely by use by shimush. Omer Ravashi, Afana Nametanina. I will also show you a mission that we learned, which will support Rav Asi's din. The mission says, Hakash al Gabemita. You have a pile of kash of straw lying on a bed, and he wants to use the bed, and and this straw, this uh, stiff straw which is piled up, is getting in the way. He can't move it around and flatten out the straw using his hand directly because kash is muktzah. Why is kash muktzah? Rashi explains because generally kash straw is uh, intended to be used for uh, cement making, for, for making of bricks, or lahasaka to be used as fuel in a fire. So it's considered to be muktzah. He can't directly come into contact with it. But he can move it around using his body. So indirect contact is okay. However, if it was designated to be used for animal feed, or alternatively, there was a car, a pillow lying on it, or a sudden a sheet lying on it from before Shabbos. In that case, it is not considered to be muktz any longer. The kash loses its muktz status. Why? As a result of having been used before Shabbos. Having, having this kar, or a sudden, placed on the kash is considered to be a shimush heter. And this makes the kash lose its muksa status. Shema mino. Indeed, this is a raya to Ravasi. So once again, we have three shitas. In order to change the status of a muksa object, what do you need to do? Either maise, machshava, or merely shimush. Continues the Gemara. Let's go back to the Brisa where we had a Shita of Rav Shimon Gamliel who tells us that Machshav is sufficient. Intention, planning to use it is sufficient to change the status. Tanakama disagrees. Tanakama says, no, you need specifically Maisa, an act, an, a Maisa which, which facilitates its use. For instance, tying together the, the Eitzim in a bundle. Who 
Who exactly is the Tana? Who is the author of that Shita? We had no name. We had a Tana Khan without a name. Says the Gemara, Uman Tana, the Palagay Dev Shemulil. Who exactly is that Tana? Which was uh, mentioned anonymously in the Bryce. Says the Gemara, it's actually Rav Chanida ben Akabji. How do we know that? The Chiyasa Rav Dimi, when Rav Dimi came, he told us, Omar Ziri. So he told us the name of Ziri, Omar Rav Chanina, Pamachas, Holach Rabbi Chanina ben Akavi, Lomokim Echot. There was once an incident where Rav Chanina ben Akavi went to a certain place. Umatza, he encountered Chariyo Yishal Dekel, these, these hardened uh, uh, palm tree branches, Shegodrom L'Shomeitzim, that were harvested for the sake of firewood, and they're Moktzim. Now they wanted to use them tomorrow on Shabbos. So he instructed his students, he instructed his Talmidim to do as follows. To go out there and intend on using these Eitzim tomorrow. So we can go out and use them and sit on them tomorrow. He didn't require them to bundle them up. Machshav alone was sufficient. However, Ziri concluded this the story by saying, I'm unsure, I'm uncertain whether if the circumstance there was involving a wedding, or it was a more for a mourner's home, and since they were preoccupied with these mitzvahs, they didn't have the, uh, the time to go ahead and tie them together. Therefore, Rabbi Hanina Rakiva was, was lenient in this regard. He didn't require them to go and bundle them. Says the Gemara, this implies the fact that he that he says I'm not sure whether it was this or that. Apparently, that is the reason for the kula, for the leniency. That is the reason why he didn't require them to bundle them. Dafka specifically because they were preoccupied. Therefore, in that case, machshava was sufficient. But here, in an ordinary scenario. We have the time to go ahead and bundle them. In this case, bundling is required. Koshar in, if you bundle these branches together, he did a maise, to indicate that he intends on using them for yeshiva, then it loses his muksa status. But loy koshar loy, but otherwise it's still muksa. So apparently this is indeed the Tana, the Tana Kama who requires a maise. It was only in that unique circumstance where it was a Beis Ha'aval, Beis Ha'mishta, where they, they didn't have the, the opportunity. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't possible for them to tie together. They were tired, they were preoccupied. Therefore, a leniency was applied. But ordinarily speaking, a, a mice is required. Continues the Gemara. We find a similar concept with Amar Reviyuda. Reviyuda taught us that this, this idea that although a, a, a mice is required generally, but if a mice is not feasible, then the Chacham were lenient and allowed even a machshava to suffice. As you will see in the following Allah Omar Vyuda. Machnis Adam, a person could bring in Maloy Kuposai offer. So you can spill out a whole basket, a whole box of, of earth into his home. Why is he doing that? To use it for his needs, to cover some waste with it. So we don't consider the offer to be muks. Why? Dorosh Marzutra, Mishmei de Marzutra Rabba. So he taught us in the name of Marzutra Rabba. Vuhu Shiikh Le Karen Zavas. When indeed is the offer not considered to be Mukta, provided that he designated for it a Karen Zavas, a corner. So he piled it up in the corner. And uh, by doing so, he prepared it, he designated it for, for this use. However, if he merely piles it in the middle of his home, that's not sufficient. To lose its muksa status. Why is that? Explains Rashi. Let's take a look at Rashi inside. He's uh, 20 lines from the bottom. Rashi says, Why? It's considered to be muchan prepared and designated for this purpose. However, if he merely spills in the middle of, his, of the room over there, it will be trampled by, by the passerby, by the members of his household. How are you bottle Ligabe Karkaya It is considered to be nullified to the kark of the house. It's muktsa. So it's only provided that he put it in the corner, he designated it on the side, and in that case it's considered to be muchan, and 
not muktzah. Says the Gemara. Apparently, the fact that merely uh, piling it in the, the Karen Zavis is sufficient, uh, even though it's, it's merely a machshava, it was merely a, a, an, inten- an intention that took place here. There was no mice here because piling it in the corner is not an intrinsic uh, change in, in the uh, in the um, in the in the offer. There was no there was no. He didn't facilitate it for use. He didn't enable it for, for use. It's merely a change of location. He took it from the outside and piled it in the corner of his home. This is not considered to be a maisa, which is indicative of the, the future use of this offer. So apparently, our view tells us that by this offer, machshava, intent, planning is sufficient to render it a non muksa item. Amru Rabbonon Kameder Rapap. So Rabbonon told, uh, said in front of Rapapa that if we're going to analyze this, this halacha, apparently we're going to conclude, Keman, who does Rabbi Yudah follow? Kebshim Gamliel. He's following the sheet of Shim Gamliel, who says that merely machshav is sufficient to be matir, the muktza item, betiltal on Shabbos, the ikra Rabbanon, because according to the sheet of Rabbanon, ha'amri b'ina ma'isa, they require a ma'isa. This is not considered to be a ma'isa. No. Even if you propose that Rav Yehuda is following, actually following Shittas Rabbanon, who generally require Maisa to be Mata the Chavetz Betiltel. But this is different. Why? At Kanlakam Rabbanon to be in a Maisa. When do Rabbanon require Maisa? Elamidi, only regarding a Chavetz, an object, the Bar Avida Be Maisa. Where a Maisa is possible. It is possible to do a maisa with it. For instance, those branches, we can simply bundle them up. So a bundling, a maisa is required. Aval midi, the lav bar, me avde be maisa. However, an item, a chefetz, which a maisa is not feasible. It's not possible to do a maisa to it. For instance, this offer, what's it going to do to, to facilitate its, its future use? It, it's offer, it's sand, it's dirt. So a ma'isa doesn't apply at all concept of doing an action. Doesn't apply. Loi. Indeed, a ma'isa is not required in this case. Now the question is why? If a ma'isa is a requirement, how can we remove this requirement just because you can't do it? Why should the mahshava be sufficient? Explain the ritva. Because in reality, a mahshava should really suffice. If he has the intent purpose to use his chayfets for, for a, a shimosh heter, that really should be enough to make it to make it mutter betiltel. However, the rabbanon were, were, were machmer. They applied a stringency. They said, you know, it's not sufficient. It's not enough to have a machshava. One needs to actually indicate, to reveal, to demonstrate that this chayf is going to be used for that purpose, for that function. Therefore, the chacham required, in addition to machshava, it also required a ma'isa to be done. But this is a chumah. This is a stringency. Therefore says the Ritva, in a case where that can't be done, it, it, it's simply not feasible. So the Rabbanon were not stringent in that case, and they said, suffice that he has a machshava, that is enough to make a mutter betiltel. But that in itself is, is really, it's really considered to be a designation, through machshava alone. So if all he can do is a machshava, that already changes its status, and considered to be designated and set aside for the Shema So in summary, we have three shittas regarding uh, taking an item, an object of muktza, and changing it into an object which is muta betiltal. We have maisa, we have machshava, and we have shimush. So Rav holds that a maisa is necessary. But as we just concluded, that's only if he can do a maisa. However, if something is not bar maisa, for instance, the offer, or in the early case in the Gemara with the uh, Beis HaOval, Beis HaMishta, that they were preoccupied. They, they, they couldn't make the mice. In that case, a machshav is sufficient. And as the Gemara told us, Rav concurs with the Shita of Rabbi Hanani ben Akavya that a mice is required generally. Shmuel teaches us a mice is not required merely I- intending, having a machshav, planning on using it on Shabbos is sufficient. And he follows the Shita of Shimon Gamliel. Finally, we have Shittas Rav Asi who tells us that Shimush, merely using the object before Shabbos, already grants it a status of a 
non muksa item. And as Gemara told us, he concurs with the second b'risa. We actually have a right from the Mishnah to this shita as well. Continues the Gemara. Okay, so we just we just uh, learned a, a new concept that even according to the shita, that requires ordinarily requires a ma'isa, an action, in order to remove its muksa status. But if it's not feasible, then it's not needed. Says the Gemara, this is actually based on a chokis tanoi. Kitanoi. We have one b'risa which tells us, One can use any sort of uh, substance to uh, polish a vessel on Shabbos. Except if he uses gartikoin, which was tartar, which was uh, found in the, um, uh, which was found in the bottom. Rashi says it, 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 uh, it's deposited in the um, the the chavish uh, yain barrels of wine. So this material, this gartikoin, cannot be used in the polishing of clay chesav, of silver, silver utensils. Why? Explains Rashi. Because clay chesav, silver uh, items are, are softer, are more delicate, and when he rubs it with this gartikoin, he's actually not just polishing it, he's not just uh, shining it, he's actually being memachik, he's smoothing out the clay chesav, and that is a malach of memachik. It's an av malacha. Therefore, one should not use the garta coin to polish with it klei chesef. Continues the b'risa. Avol neser v'choyl mutter. However, to use neser, some sort of earth, v'choyl, sand, he can use it even in the polishing of klei chesef. That's okay. V'atanya, we have another b'risa which tells us, neser v'choyl asur. One cannot use neser v'choyl in polishing. Says the Gemara, what is the point of contention here? My love, you must say, This is the point of disagreement. It's a muksa discussion. The Mar Savar Bin and Maisa. The Bryson number two holds that Nesar Rachel is muksa. Why? Because even though it's not, it's not feasible to do a Maisa with it, to change it, its form, therefore the concept of doing a Maisa to remove its muksa status it doesn't, it's not practical here. Nevertheless, since a ma'isa wasn't done, there's still moksa. The nesav achol remains moksa. You need a ma'isa in all circumstances. Therefore, the ma'isa says you can't use nesav achol. The first ma'isa holds, Umar Savar, loy bein a ma'isa. In this case, of the nesav achol, since it is an item which, which a ma'isa is not feasible to, to be done to it, a ma'isa is not required. Machshav alone is sufficient. Therefore, one can indeed use nesav achol on Shabbos. So apparently this concept mentioned earlier is actually a, the point of contention between two tanoi. Whether or not a maisa is still required even when we're speaking about an item, an object which is lav bar maisa, where it's not practical to do a maisa to it. Says Mara, no, it's actually not a muqtza discussion. Loi, the kuli alma, all agree loi being a maisa. In this case a maisa is not required, machshav is sufficient. It's actually not a muksa discussion. The point of contention, the point of disagreement between these two tanoim is unrelated to muksa. It's actually related to the malach of a machik. So the more of kash is not difficult. The contradiction will be explained as follows. One bride says, follow Shita's Rehuda, the other one reflects Shita's Reb Shimon. Because even Nesar B'choyl can perhaps also smooth out the chli chesef. It can have that smoothing effect which is av, which is av malacha. However, it's a dove shem is kavan. He has no intention of doing this malacha. He's merely trying to, to uh, polish the chli chesef. So this is considered to be a dove shem is kavan. One does one act, one maisa, which will perhaps result in a secondary uh, act, malacha, uh, uh, be performed, but with add his kavana without his, his intention to do that, to that malacha. According to Rabbi Yehuda, it's Asr. Dover Shem is Kavan is Asr. According to Rabbi Shimon, it's Muta. So indeed, the, the two Bryces are disagreeing on this point. One is following Shittas Rabbi Yehuda, who holds Hor Rabbi Yehuda, the Omar Dover Shem is Kavan is Asr, and therefore Nesav Achal cannot be used in polishing the Klei Chesef for concern that it might smooth it out, even though he has no Kavana for that. Dover Shem is Kavan is Asr. 
The first price which allows is Harab Shimon, following the sheet of Rav Shimon, the Omar, the Omar Shem is Kavan, is Mutter. So it's unrelated to Mukta. The Bryces are discussing the Malacha of Memachik, and there's a concern perhaps that will take place, Shloy Bekavana. And the Bryces are dependent on, a, on the Shittas of Rav Yehuda, who prohibits, and Rav Shimon, who allows. Continues the Gemara. Bimayu Kimta, Lohad Shari. Okay, how have you established and interpreted this brisa which allows, which allows the use of Nesav Achoyl on Shabbos? Grab Shimon. It's following Shittas of Shimon. Okay, let's move on. Let's take a look at the, the Seifa, the, the latter part of that brisa. Ema Seifa. The brisa says, so you can use it in polishing the Kalim. Aval, you must know that he can't use it. Lo Yochavem Reish. Sorry, he can't use the Nesav Achoyl to clean his hair with it. Why? Because there's a concern that it will pull out some hair. And that's a malacha. Says to him, one second. If we're following Shit, it's Rab Shimon. Why is that Asr? Vi Rab Shimon? Who says, Dover She'ein Miskavan is Mutter? Mishra Kashari. We find that Rab Shimon actually allows the use of Nasr Bachoil. He's not concerned about pulling out hair. It's unintentional. It's not something inevitable. It's something that may or not, may not happen. And it's unintentional. And therefore, there should be Mutter on Shabbos. Says I'll bring you a right. This is not as we find in the Mishnah. This is re- with regard to a Nazir who accepted upon himself a, a, a vow not to take a haircut. Says, says the uh, says Rabbi Shimon, Nazir from a face. A Nazir can indeed wash his hair, can clean his hair using the Nesar of Achoyl, These agents, or a face, he can also uh, manually separate the, the hair with his finger. There's no concern about pulling out hair. I will use but we cannot use a, a comb to comb his hair, because in that case, as Rashi says in the fourth line, I will use the masrik, the vada mesher, because it certainly will pull out some hair. And since it's inevitable that that will happen, it's us even according to Shimon. So we see clearly that even according to Shimon, there's no concern when one uses the Nesar Vachoyl agents to, to uh, clean his hair. There's no concern about pulling out hair. It's considered to be a Dover Shem is Skaven. Second, the Brysa tells us. This Brysa, which is following Shittas of Shimon, how could that Brysa tell us that on Shabbos, one cannot clean his hair using Nesav Achoyl? Says the Gemara, apparently it's not following Shem is Ella, you must say, rather, Ha'bahar of Yudahi. Both Brysas are following Shittas of Yudahi. They reflect from Yehuda's opinion, which holds that Dover Shem is Skaven is also. That explains why he can't use the Nesar Bechol to clean his hair. We're concerned about pulling out hair. If so, how are you going to reconcile this apparent contradiction between the Brysa which says that Nesar Bechol can be used in polishing the clay chesef? The other Brysa which tells us that it's also to be used for that purpose. How are you going to answer that steer? says, There are two Tanoim which base their opinions on Rabbi Yehuda. They both concur with Rabbi Yehuda's concept. That Dovish and Miskavan is also. So, what is the point of contention between them? Hi, Tana Ali Rabbiuda Savar. So, one Tana who's following Rabbiuda Shita holds, Gurr, that we are concerned about this Nesar Vachal smoothing out the Klei Chesef, which is a Malacha, is a Dovish and Miskavan, and it's also. So, this is Bryce number two, which told us that one cannot use Nesar Vachal. The high tan, however, the first tan who told us that it is mutter to use Nesav Achoyl to polish the Yichlech he holds. He's following Rabbi Yudashita. The high tan, a leader of Yudah, Savar Loigar, he holds that there's no concern with this Nesav Achoyl. It won't scrub, it won't smooth out these uh, silver items, and therefore there's no concern even according to Rabbi Yudha. So once again, in conclusion, both prices are following Shita Rabbi Yudah, the Adav Hashem is Kavan is The point of contention is simply whether or not this Nesav Achoyl will be me'amachik, will smooth out those clay chesed. Says Mara, okay. But Mayu came to Rabbi Yehuda. How have you established these prices? They reflect Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. Eima Seifa. Let's take a look at the, the, the bottom part of the b'risa, b'risa number one. The b'risa told us he can use the Nesav Achoyl for clay chesed, but he cannot use it to clean his hair on account of a concern that it will pull out his hair. But the Brysa concludes by saying, although he can't use it to, to uh, clean his hair, Avo, 
but he could use it. Pan of the other can use it to wash his face, hands, and feet. Says him, well, why is that allowed? How may ever say her? He's going to pull out hair of his beard. Says the Gemara, very simple. Iboy say me cotton. One answer is he's not a minor, doesn't have a beard. They caught him. Iboy say me be isha, woman who doesn't have a beard. Iboy say me be a man who has a uh, medical condition where he doesn't have a beard growing. So there's no concern of pulling out any hair. So in summary, we have two Bryces. Bryce is number one, which tells us that one can use Nesav Achoyl in polishing the silver items. Bryce is number two, which says it's Aser. How are we going to reconcile this apparent contradiction? So we have three stages in the Gemara. Initially we figured it was a Muktzah question. First Bryce says, a Maisa is not required, it's not Muktzah. Second Bryce says, a Maisa is required to nullify the Muktzah status from the Nesav Achoyl, and therefore they're Muktzah. The Gemara retracted from that and proceeded and said, no, all agree, in the case of Choyl, Nesav Choyl, since it's not practical, a, a Maisa there is not feasible, a Maisa is not required, merely a Machshob is sufficient to remove its Muktzah status. So what then is the point of contention between two Braises? It's nothing to do with Muktzah. The discussion here is a Melach of Mamachik. Since by using the Nesav Choyl to polish the Chechesef, it carries a concern, a possibility that it will smooth it out which is a mlach of a machik. Although it's dover she'in meskavet. Perhaps that, that is also. And indeed, that is the point of contention. According to the first b'risa, which is following Shidzer of Shimon, it's mutter, because dover she'in meskavet is mutter. The second b'risa, which, is, which reflects from Yehuda's shita, holds that it's also, because dover she'in meskavet is also. The Gemara fell away from that, and concluded that both prices are reflecting Shidzer of Yehuda. The machlek is simply is whether there's a concern by Nesem Rechoyl, whether or not is going to smooth out the Chesef. According to the first b'risa, there, cons- there is no concern that it will do that. According to the second b'risa, there is a possibility that it will be good it will smooth it out. And therefore, we don't allow him to use it. Because even though he has no kavana to smooth out the Chesef, Dover Shem is awesome. Continues the Gemara, Omar of Yehuda. Offer Leventa, a crushed brick. Sure, one can use it to... Uh, to clean his hair, to clean his face, even, even if he has a beard, there's no concern that it will rip out here. Omar of Yosef, Kuspa de Yasmin. Uh, pulp of, of sesame, of crushed sesame, is also shari can be used for that purpose. Omar of offer pilpuli shari. Crushed um, peppers, these two are mutter, powdered peppers are mutter. There's no concern with these agents of pulling out here. Omar of Sheshis, is barda shari. This Asian called Barda is also permitted for this use. My Barda, what exactly is this? Omar of Yosef. It actually has three ingredients. Tilsa Ahola, it is a third Ahola. Rashi says it is a, a root, shayrish of an Asif that's called Ahol. So a third of it is this Ahola, the Tilsa Asa, a third of it is a Asa Hadas, a myrtle. The Tilsa Sigli, a third is made of, of, um, of violets. So it's a third, a third, and a third. So when it's used in this, uh, this uh, proportion, it's okay. So apparently if you use more than a third of, uh, of the Ola in it, it makes it too powerful, too potent, which will carry with it a risk of pulling out here. Ola Rechem Yibar Yosef. No, even more than a third of Ola is okay. Kol Eicha Delek Ruba Ola Shavar Dami. As long as the, this, um, this Barda agent, this cleaning agent, doesn't contain a majority of Ola, it's okay, even if it, even if it contains more than a third of Allah, it won't, it doesn't carry a risk of pulling out here on Shabbos. Continues the Gemara, Bo Minei Merav Sheshis, they have the following Shalot of Sheshis. Ma'olif Tsoya Zesim B'Shabbos. May one go ahead and take olives and crush it onto a rock on Shabbos. The crushing process uh, uh, sweetens it somewhat. So can that be done on Shabbos? Now what is the concern? He explains to Jesus, perhaps it's also because He's being a sack in the oichel. He's fixing the food. Perhaps that's also. Amalu, so if Sheshi responded, you ask about Shabbos? Why do you focus on Shabbos? How are you allowed to do this even during the weekday? Because Savar, if Sheshi holds, he can't do it. Mishum has the on account of wasting the food. How's he wasting the food? Because the oil that gets squeezed out when he crushes the olives goes to waste. So therefore, it's not allowed to be done even during the weekdays. Says the Gemara, really? Lema pliga de Perhaps. Apparently, 
Rav Sheish is in a disagreement with Shmuel who told us, Dama Shmuel, Oisa Adam called Tzarka a pass. One can use bread for any purpose. For instance, Rashi says, um, to be used, being Tashma should be used as, as, as I think the Gemara over there says in, in Brachis to, uh, to lean on it, the, the bowl. So for any personal use, or Rashi says to crumble into a, uh, into a dish. So Shmuel holds that pas can be used for anything. So apparently Rav Sheshis disagrees with him. He holds that crushing it is a problem. Says more is the difference. Amri, they said pas le meisa. When he uses the bread for his purpose, he's not, he's not being memized the pas. He's not making it repulsive. He's not ruining it. He's not wasting it. Hani meisi, but these olives, meaning the juice that, that uh, comes out of the olives, goes to waste. It becomes repulsive, and therefore, it's not allowed to be done. It's not allowed to be done even during the weekdays. Continues the Gemara. Ameymar umarzutu ravashi. Haviyasu. So Ameymar and Marzutra were sitting. Ameymar, together with Marzutra and Ravashi, they were sitting. Aisil kamayu barda. So barda, this cleansing agent that we discussed earlier, was brought before them. And what did they do with it? Ameymar ravashi. Moshu. Amem and Ravashi both washed themselves with it. Some say Moshe died their hands with this bard. Marzutra Moshe, Marzutra did not use, use it. He hesitated to use this bard. So Amrulei, they told him, "What's wrong? Why do you refuse to use this? Apparently, it was on Shabbos, and he refused to use it in a place. Uh, they figured he he was afraid of of pulling out here." Why, why are you concerned with using this barda? Do you not hold the Rav Sheshis who told us? Do you not hold the other Rav Sheshis? There's no concern of pulling out any here. Omar Lahu Rav Mardachai. So Rav Mardachai responded to them, to um, Amei Ravashi. He says, look, Barmine Demar, count him out of the equation. It's not because of this. It's not on account of, of a concern of pulling out here on Shabbos that he is refusing to use his barda. Because even during the weekday, he will not do it. I feel Bechoyl Nami Loi. Nami Loi. Even during the weekday, he wouldn't use his barda. Lami Loi He doesn't hold that one is allowed to use his barda. Now apparently this barda was not just something which simply cleaned. It was something which, uh, which beautified the person. It was... Uh, Apparently had a, a cosmetic property to it. And therefore, he refused to use it even during the weekday. Why? Savala, because he held, he had the sanya. Like the, like the following b'risa, which says, Megar Adam, one could scrape off gilded soya, cross of, of dirt from his body, the gilded mak, cross of a wound, shal basari, bishvot sari, because it's, it's inconveniencing him, it's, it's uncomfortable. The im, im bishvot yapois, but if the purpose of his hair is to beautify oneself, Usr, that is not allowed. Why is it us? Says Rashi, right, right off to the side. Mishum layapas is atzmai usr, says Rashi. Mishum layilbash gever simlasisha. Tara says a, a male is not to wear a, a article of clothing, a women's, a women's article of clothing. Here too, one cannot beautify himself using this, this agent, this barda, because this is applies to all types, all, all forms of beautification. Beautifying oneself, uh, grooming oneself, is, is a woman's thing. A man is not allowed to get himself involved in this. Therefore, he refused to clean himself with this barda. Says the Gemara, if so, what did they hold? Amei Mar Marvashi, who indeed used this barda. Why was it allowed? The Inu, they, Keman, Savru. Who did they hold like? Says the Gemara, Vinu, Keman, Savru, Ki, Hod, Sanya, like the following price. What is meant to wash his face, hands, and feet every day? On account of respect and honor for Hashem. As it says, Everything Hashem created in this world, for his honor. As Rashi explains, this is the next Rashi off to the side. To honor and respect Hashem. What is the connection between washing oneself, keeping oneself clean? With respect to Hashem, says Rashi, very simple. Hashem created a human being in his own form, in his own selim. So maintaining a clean body 
it, when one sees the other person's cell and form clean, he, he relates he relates to Hashem differently. It brings a person closer to Hashem because a person's surah, a person's form, it resembles Hashem's surah, Kaviyachal. And therefore, it, he relates to Hashem with, 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 with a different relation, with a relationship. He relates to him, it brings him closer to Hashem. V'oit says Rashi, Another reason a person sees handsome, brioys, nice looking, clean looking people. So once he's nice, brioys, nice creatures, he, he, he tends to thank Hashem. It, 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 it arouses a feeling of, of appreciation to Hashem. So, on account of both of these reasons, number one, because the person's form, the person's surah resembles Hashem's surah, one is meant to keep it clean so that others will, will, will relate to Hashem's surah with, with the utmost respect. Will bring him closer to Hashem. Therefore, that is one reason to wash oneself. Number two, because Bria is Yafais evoke people's a feeling of appreciation to Hashem. So it's for a good purpose. It's Hashem Shamayim. Therefore, certainly one is meant to wash himself every single day. Continues the Gemara. Rablezim Razayim Kupa Matal Sida Venoital. We're discussing the uh, the Kupa, the basket, the box containing the insulated pot. Which was insulated using the Gizet Semer, the shearings of wool, which are Muksa. Rabbi Lezer Azai says, don't remove the pot from there. Simply tip over the entire box and remove the contents in that manner. Chacham say it's okay, you can take out the pot and return it. Continues the Gemara. Omar Rab Abba Omar all agree. Shimneskal Kalaguma, that of the uh, cavity where the the hole where the pot was sitting, it, it, it was in the skull, it got ruined, the, the Gizet Semer collapsed into the cavity. All agree that it's Muksa, she also laughs, he can't go push back the Gizet Semer. As Sergius points out, he can't use the pot to push them aside because he's directly handling the Gizet Semer. Even if he uses the pot to do that, it's also considered to be Tiltal Muksa and it's also. Okay, says the Gemara, let's take a look at the Mishnah. Tanar, we learned the Mishnah. Noi He may remove the pot and put it back in its place. And Rav Lezer Rezai says, no, we can't do so. How are we going to understand this machlikas? Hey, Chidami, what are we speaking about? What happened here? If the cavity has not been disturbed, then we understand the Rabbanon perfectly. What's wrong with putting back the pot? There's no moksa involved. And as, uh, as Jesus points out, what is the reason for Shita's brothers and Isaiah, why does he prohibit? El Alav must be speaking about Afa Pish and Skalkla Guma. And even if the Guma collapsed, this Gizet Semer inside the cavity, according to the Abun, one may restore the, put back the pot, because you can push around the Gizet Semer using the pot. So apparently, the Mishnah is indicating not like the statement of Abu Torah that the Gizet Semer are Asr. Once they fall into the cavity, cannot push them aside. Says no, loy, 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 We're speaking about the, the cavity hadn't, hadn't collapsed. It's, we're not discussing moving around the Gizet Semer. There's certainly Muktzah. So what then is the point of contention? What is the Machlekes between Rebbe Lezer and Zayed Rabbanon? It's a, it's a question of concern. Mar Savar, Choyshishin, Shem and Eskalkel, or Soma Gersh, Chosh Shem Shem, it's Eskalkel. Rebbe Lezai is concerned that if he takes out the pot completely from the, from the hole, from the cavity, we're concerned that perhaps the Gizet Semer will collapse into this hole, and he'll be inclined to go ahead and, and push them around and be metal to Muktzah. So don't remove the pot. Chosh Shem Shem and Eskalkel, Agum, Omar Sab, the Charcham said, no, any Chosh Shem, we're not concerned. As the first one explained, it would be Exer, Exer, if we had to apply an Isser in this case, you can't remove the pot. That's one zero. I'm concerned that the guma will collapse and he'll go ahead and touch muksa, which is really a drabana. So it's really a double zero, double drabana under the hold. We do not apply an isra in this case. Continues the gemara. Amar Afun, Ha'is Likusta. So it actually explains this is a, a plant, a pleasant looking and smelling plant, which was inserted into a container of moist earth and it would be removed when one wanted to smell it. So. This slikusta, this, this uh, plant, this asif, can it be removed on Shabbos from this offer? It depends. Dotsa, if it was inserted into the offer, shof and removed. Vahadar dotsa and inserted again before Shabbos. 
Sharia, in this case it's mutter, because the, the hole was already widened and broadened, and when one goes and removes this, this asap, this plant on Shabbos, he's not generating, he's not creating a hole, he's not doing the malach of choifer. Ve'ilav, however, if this plant was not put in and out twice, then the hole is too narrow, it's too tight, it's too firm. Also, he can't remove it on Shabbos because, because doing so, it, it, broadens, it, it, it broadens the hole and it's considered to be a malach of choifer. Omar Shmuel, similar malach Haisakina, this knife, the Beni Urvi, which was plucked between the rows of bricks. Here too, we required that from before Shabbos, it had been already put in twice. Dotza would have been put in, shofa withdrawn, vada dotza, and placed in again between the bricks. In that case, shori, it is mutter to do it on Shabbos. Because in that case, the hole is wide enough. The lav asr, however, if it wasn't done to this extent, it's asr to do it on Shabbos because he is making a hole, and making a hole is asr, it's a malacha, lacha of taldav boina. Kadin is Gemara, third case, marzutra v'yitem rav ashi omar, b'gur daisa dekani shabadami. When we have a clump of, of uh, rods, which are, uh, of, of uh, reeds, which are growing tightly together, one can go ahead and stick his knife between them, there's no concern, what can be the concern? There's no concern that the, perhaps the, the peel of the, of the reed will get peeled off, and he's doing a malacha of machek, there's no concern. Now Tzaisus points out, how can you use the, the reeds on Shabbos, one is not meant to use a tree on Shabbos. Says Tzaisus was speaking about it's within three tfachim of the karka and it's allowed. Says the Gemara, Omer leira, mardcha leirav, Moser of Katina to Yuftar of Katina asked the following kasha, how could Rav Huna say that the only way he can pull out a plant from the earth is if the hole was sufficiently widened before Shabbos, otherwise he can't do it. The following mission seems to indicate otherwise. The mission says, one who buries turnip or radishes, tachas, agef, and underneath a vine. He did it for the purpose of, of storage, of safekeeping. He didn't intend to plant it there. Says the mission, how you mix us all of Megulim? If some of the leaves were exposed. There's no concern. He's not mixing up two species because he's not planting it under the vine. He doesn't have to be concerned about perhaps the radishes grew on the ground. Now Rashi points out that the point of the leaves being exposed is specifically stated for the Allah of Muktzah. For the Allah of Kalaim Shviyas and Maisa, there's no need to have leaves exposed. But to remove it on Shabbos, he needs leaves. So he can pluck it out using those leaves, even though when he pulls it out, some of the earth around the hole will get moved around. We see there's no concern. Here as well, says Rabbi Katina, he can pull out the plant from the earth, even though when he does so, some of the earth around this pre-existing hole will get loosened up. There's no concern. It's not considered to be a malacha to yuft indeed. This is a refutation of Rafunas Chiddush. Even when it's tightly fitting, he can go pull it out on Shabbos. Okay, time for a chazorah on today's daf. So the daf began discussing uh, the Gizeh Semer Shirim's of Ovuch HaMuktzah. The Gemara taught us that if he permanently designates them, for, for instance, for Atmana, then they lose their Muktzah status. If he uses Miyachah them, then they're Muttah B'Total. However, if he merely uses them for Atmana, then it depends. Ordinary Gizeit Semer lose their Muktzah status based on that. However, those Gizeit Semer sitting in the Heftek, the, this warehouse, this pile of commercial items, intended specifically for commercial use, those Gizeit Semer retain their Muktzah status, even if he used them for Atmana, unless he specifically is them, he permanently designates them for Atmana. The, the Gemara proceeded and told us that even an object which is Muktzah, can lose its muksa status, provided that he designates it for Shimon Shetar. We have three shitas, what is required? One shita says, a mice is required, it needs to do an act, an action which will facilitate its use. The Gemara actually proceeded and concluded that when that's not feasible, then certainly a machshava designation is enough, even according to this shita. We have another shita which says, a mice is not required, merely it, 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 planning, intending on using it is sufficient. The machshav is enough. Rav Asi holds that none of those are required. Merely using it, shimush, is sufficient. If you use it in our Shabbos, that itself is sufficient to grant it. Heter tiltal. The Gemara proceeded by giving us a contradiction, an apparent steer between one b'risa which says, one may use Nesar B'choyl to polish his silver with. The other b'risa prohibits. The Gemara had three stages. Initially, the Gemara said it's, it's a muksha discussion. The more proceeded and said, no, we're discussing a, a possible malacha, a davashem neskaven, 
One sheet is following Rabbi Shimon who says it's mutter. The other Bryce is following Rabbi Yehuda who says it's asr. We conclude that both are reflecting sheet of Rabbi Yehuda. That David Shimon is coming as asr. The Bryce which allows holds that there's no concern of smoothing out the klichesa with the nest of It won't happen. The other Bryce says it's asr. Perhaps it will smooth out the klichesa. The more proceeding that told us that this cleansing agent called barda is mutter. There's no concern of it pulling out here. The more told us that one may not waste food. Hefzad Eichlin, one is meant to wash his face, hands, and feet for the sake of Hashem's honor. The Gemara told us that according to the Chacham, one may pull out the pot from the cavity. There's no concern that the Guma will collapse and he will do Mukta. And finally, one can pull out this plant from the earth. There's no concern of generating a hole on Shabbos.